Christopher Hitchens on the line right now. Christopher Hitchens, the author of God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything, number one New York Times bestseller, now out in paperback, HitchensWeb.com, the website. Christopher Hitchens, welcome to the show. Very nice of you to invite me. Uh, thank you very much for, sh for showing up. Um, I've, I've read large chunks of your book. I can't claim to have read every word of it. I've, I've uh, over the years, watched several of your debates with other people, and it seems to me that there's that you've developed a bit of a mini industry. You and and uh, Chris Hedges as well, uh, both of you, um, bashing respectively and and defending essentially um, superstitious monotheism, and. Uh, I, it seems like a, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. You know, you say, well, you know, do you believe that uh, Muhammad leaped from his horse to the to the to the sky? You know, well, Christians will say no. Muslims will say yes. Uh, do you believe Jesus was resurrected? Christians will say yes. Muslims will say no. But isn't this is doesn't this all beg the much larger issue? of why is it that every culture, including indigenous cultures, uh, including first contact cultures, that, that every human culture that we've ever found has had some form of both a, a, a sense of the sacred, which usually takes the form of, of shamanism or, or uh, you know, rumiism, I don't know, <laughs> for, for at least Sufism is a good example, and has institutionalized that in, in, in ways that eventually become toxic, and we call those religion. Well, it's because we are um, evolved primates who have a pattern-seeking uh, capacity. Uh, seek and you shall find. I remember when I used to be taught it in, ch in church, always used to strike me as rather sinister because it was so true. If you seek, you will find. Um, if, you want a, if you want a pattern, you will, di you will discern one. We prefer junk um, theories to no theories at all, or conspiracy theories to no explanation. And religion is our first attempt to make sense of things. Why are we here? How did we get here? Um, so first attempt at philosophy, first attempt at medicine. Usually these things are in some way bound up with promises that they can heal, um, keep the congregation uh, interested. Um, though it's hard to do when you don't have a germ theory of disease and think that disease may be a punishment for not making enough sacrifice. Yeah, back before Van Leeuwenhoek, for example. No, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but you're... you're we, we are innately disposed to fear and superstition and explanation. And the, the three of these combined uh, don't make it very mysterious that um, religion continues to have a hold on people. I, I absolutely agree. But you didn't answer the question. Why is it that the the sense of transcendence, the sense of the numinous, the sense of the uh, of of awe, the 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 looking into the Hubble telescope and going, oh my God, or just standing out at night and and staring into the night sky, or looking into the eyes of a cat or a dog or of your lover, and knowing at some deep level that there is something that is unknowable. Why is that? You know, why is that so easily dismissed, both by atheists and by those who call themselves religious? I don't know that it's dismissed by those who call themselves religious, but it, it, it certainly isn't by atheists, and, it, if, if, and most certainly not by me. I mean, the, the words numinous and transcendent and the example of the Hubble telescope are all I'm proud to say from my book, um, and the sense of awe um, and the, uh, uh, the sense of wonder. Uh, I write, write quite a lot about that. It's very important, in my opinion. It's a big cultural project to separate the numinous and the transcendent, the things that go with poetry and love and music and landscape, from the superstitious and the supernatural. These things don't prove a supernatural dimension. There isn't a supernatural dimension. Um, How do you know? Well, I think we would know if there was. You, 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 ha you assert the ability to prove a negative? Yes, I think if there's no evidence for something, I'm willing to say it's not there. So, 200 I mean, years ago, there were no radio waves? The corollary for my antagonist doesn't quite hold, because they have to act as if they knew there was. And, uh, uh, no, that's a much easier argument to knock down, I agree. But So you're saying that 200 years ago, there were no x-rays? No. It's like saying, what was the largest island before the discovery of Australia? But that's what you just said. No, it isn't. You said, you said that there's no evidence for transcendence. 
Uh, there's there's no evidence for excuse me for the supernatural, no, no and therefore no, it doesn't no exist. No claimed there were X-rays to be met with the argument. No, there aren't. There's no evidence for them. So I'm sorry, your analogy won't hold up. Well, I would I would say first of all, there's considerable evidence for, <laughs> for the supernatural. Uh, well, uh, first of all, let's define the supernatural. But maybe maybe we're we're speaking at cross purposes here. I'm defining the supernatural as what you're perhaps defining as the numinous and the transcendent, and that is. Uh, that that sense that perhaps may just be a mild epileptic seizure. You know, I mean, there's there's a whole other theory of religion there, but that 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 knowing of something beyond what is knowable. No, it's um, it's claiming to know of something that would involve, if it were true, the suspension of the, the ordinary laws of nature. In other words, a miracle, in other words. I mean, if you okay, you, so you, so or. or um, Intercessory prayer, being uh, or laying or, or mirac miraculous healing, that kind of thing is what I'm talking about. Right. So then, f that dimension does not exist. And, yeah. I mean, I I'm, you know, I, I don't I don't disagree with you broadly that 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 dimension does not exist in as much as it totally violates all the laws of physics. However, what what kind of arrogance must we have to think that we understand all the laws of physics? I mean, I. Uh, I, I've had people do Reiki on me, for example, and I, I, I don't think that it's just, or, or acupuncture for that matter, and I don't think it's just placebo effect. Physics, uh, physicists, rather, I mean, of whom I'm not one, um, have perhaps very nearly approached the outskirts of the, of the point where they know something about how little we know, which is the only definition I have of being educated, having, having a sense of how little you know. Um, so I think you're back so to making no my one, point. No one, claims, no one claims to know all of them, but there are some elementary laws that are not suspended. Indeed, Einstein says the miraculous thing, if there is one, is that these laws work all the time. Though there's, there's something that holds them in place. But and yet the most recent research indicates that, you know, Einstein was wrong in some of the things that he was proposing. Oh, yeah, Einstein was not right about everything. Um, and there, you know, nobody, really nobody understands what the, the next big subject is going to be, it seems to me, the quantum, which uh, there is hardly a single person in the world who's qualified even to say what it is. But here's my, here's my point, Chris Richards. We know that if you use quantum theory, on the other hand, that it always works. But no one quite, nobody really knows why. Well, the same is true of electricity, and up until just a few years ago, the same is true of aspirin. I'm not, but I'm not saying if you believe in electricity, you can be saved and given eternal life. No, and neither am I. My suggestion, so, 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 my so, suggestion... They just have to make assertions that are nothing to do with evidence. What, what, I, what I am submitting to you is that your, your wholesale rejection of things that are beyond your immediate sphere of knowledge or provability is in and of itself a religion, that your atheism, your, your, your proclaimed atheism is as much a religion as Chris Hedges proclaimed Christianity. Well, obviously not, because you don't know anything about me if I say I'm an atheist, except that I don't believe in, in the existence of, of a supernatural being. I mean, I could be anything not as well as that, but it's, that, it's not a faith. It's, it's an assertion that faith is pointless. It's an evangelical it's, assertion. Oh, sorry? It's an evangelical assertion. No, it's not. What's evangelical about it? That you're writing a book, you're running around, you're doing book tours, you're, you're trying to convince people of your way of thinking. That's evangelism, is it not? No, it isn't. What is it? Evangelism is saying to people, if they'll join me, they'll be saved. No, I think well, it's making the promise of eternal life. Excuse me, that's what it is. I think that's 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 one type of evangelism and one type of religion. Well, this is a campaign. By I mean, the, you know, Bill Gates is an evangelist for Windows. To emancipate, to get people to emancipate themselves from that from that delusion. There's nothing religious about it in the least. I don't offer them anything. I say you, you, you're doomed to have to think for yourselves and to emancipate yourself from the whole. So you're offering them freedom, emancipation. I know I'm not. I'm offering them the chance to, uh, to free themselves, but I can't do it for them. I can't make them a promise. Right. I don't promise Right. It, it just like a Christian would say, I can't free you, but Jesus can. You're saying your logic it's will. It's not just like that. It's precisely the opposite of that. If you wouldn't be as uh, accused. If I wouldn't be, I'm so sorry. Accused about it. It's clearly <laughs> not a faith. Okay, I understand you can't. You, you've got to. Yeah, you've got to move along. So, uh, Christian uh, Christopher Hitchens, HitchensWeb.com. God is not great is the book. Thank you, Christopher, for being with us.